And hello, everybody. I'd just like to start by giving you a very brief overview of Spokephone. So what is Spokephone? Well, it's a feature-rich soft phone and it's developed for Twilio. So let's think about you know, customers that you may have um, spoken to or leads that may have said to you, how do I transfer a call from Flex to my back office? Or maybe they've said, do you have a cloud phone system that could replace my existing Cisco phones, 8x8, Avaya, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe they've said, I'm putting in flex into my call center, but what are you going to do about replacing all my back office phones uh, for the rest of my business? Well, Spokephone provides this feature-rich soft phone, and it can uh, replace the traditional PBX um, or systems like um, Cisco, for example, and move your back office communications into the cloud. So how does this Twilio ecosystem all fit together? Well, if you think about Flex, that's your system for your front office and your contact center agents. So Spokephone's your tool for the back office and every other employee. So together, Flex and Spoke bring together end-to-end -to -end customer communications on Twilio. Flex for your front office and Spoke for your back office. Uh, spoke supports both uh, phone and, check, uh, and chat and text uh, channels and is available on um, Windows and Mac computers, iOS and Android. So today's um, seminar is going to be on reporting and analytics, and we're going to show you how um, using spoke analytics can help enhance your business performance and minimize your missed calls. So in the next 23 minutes, we're going to talk about reporting versus analytics and have a look at what the difference is between the two. I'm going to show you spoke analytics and what we have as our out of the box insights. Then we're going to have a look at our KPIs and metrics and how we can put alerts on those to make sure you're um, aware of what's happening within your business. And then how do you create custom reports and then automate and schedule them. So let's start with a, just a little overview about reporting and analytics and what's the difference. Well, when I'm talking to either new customers or prospects, one of the things I always ask them is, um, what reports are you using? And quite often I get a huge long list with every single metric possible, every report possible, in every date range possible. And they say to me, oh yes, these are absolutely essential reports. And I say to them, well, how do they feed back into your overall business objectives? And usually the question is, hmm, actually, I don't know. And that's a problem because if all you're doing is creating reports, then they're not actually going to help your business improve and grow and perform. So if you think about reporting as just taking existing data and presenting it in a user-friendly way, then analytics is about interpreting that data, adding value by using that information to inform your business decision-making. So let's go and take a look. As you can see here, we've embedded our analytics tool within the existing admin portal. So many of you will, who are familiar with Spoke will be used to this, this admin portal here. So we've got uh, the this, this Spoke analytics in here and we use um, as our reporting engine, good data. Now, those of you that are familiar with Flex will probably say that this looks quite similar to what you're using in, um, in Flex, and that's because it's using the same reporting engine. And that's good for the customer for a couple of reasons, because they're familiar with it. So if they've got Flex and Spoke, it gives them continuity across their reporting platforms. Um, but also, us working with Twilio means that uh, we've got a common system that we're using. So anything that Twilio does, Spoke can do as well. 
So let's take a look at what you get out of the box. So you have your analytics tool here and anybody who is an admin in the spoke portal will automatically be given access to the analytics tool. However, you can also give um, access to your business managers who may not have an admin function within spoke. So that's a really good uh, feature because you're allowing those business managers to keep an eye on performance, manage it, and be able to report back into the business without giving them access to the rest of the admin tools. So the only thing that they will see when they come in here is the analytics tool. What we're looking at first is our overview dashboard. So we've built four out of the box dashboards that give you information across lots of different metrics. And you have a number of different filters to allow you to look at um, information in different ways and drill down into the more granular areas of that of, of your, your information. So the first thing let's look at is let's take a date range of this quarter. And what you'll see when we do this is that underneath will be comparative data. So automatically, I'm getting some analytics here to show me my call volume has gone up by 164% from last quarter. So as a new business, for example, that's great. You know, your call volume's going up. If you're a complaints handler, that's not so good. So it's all about looking at that data and thinking, okay, what does that tell my business about what's going on? Um, if my unanswered calls have gone down, then we're getting better and making sure we uh, you know, catch those calls before they get missed. My call minutes are going up. Okay, that means that my costs are going up. How am I going to manage that within my organization? So you've got lots of information across here automatically that tells you how your business is functioning. You will have noticed as I've gone past these little icons at the top. I can come into one of my alarms and I can put um, a metric on here to say, if this goes above, say, 1800, I want you to send me an email. So I'm going to set this alert. And automatically in my inbox, the minute we go over 1800 calls, I'm going to get an alert to tell me, actually, these call volumes are now above your threshold. So that could be on unanswered calls, probably a bit more useful on unanswered calls because you want to know when you're missing your calls. We give you information around call type. So you can see in here, we're spending more of our time on outbound than inbound, which is great if you're an outbound sales team, that's what you should be doing. But if you're mainly supposed to be dealing with inbound, that gives you a, a really good view that actually something's not quite right in your business. Again, we give you information around calls by day of the week. So again, you can see what's my busiest day? When do I need to be resourcing uh, my teams to make sure I've got people there to answer the calls? And then interval data, to say, right, by hour of day, when is my busiest time? So I can then see, right, we may need to make sure that at one and two o'clock, we have plenty of people on because that's when people are calling us. We then split that down into our inbound activity. So a little bit more information here around inbound and then wait times, answer rates, call duration, the normal things that you would expect to see in your metrics. Again, any of these, individual uh, reports here can be exported out to TSB or Excel. This is quite a useful one if you're an outbound sales team, you can see who are your top performers. So if you're performance based, um, you know, in your teams, you can say, right, okay, let's have a look at who's making the most outbound calls because they're bringing business into our organization. So what are some of the other filters? So I can filter on specific telephone numbers coming into our organization. I can look at time of day. So I can say, right, I only want to look at the period when I'm busiest to see exactly what those calls are. And I can filter by individual uh, users. So if I clear this, we just pick on myself. And we can see what my performance is. So. Thankfully, my unanswered rate is quite low compared to the uh, 
the usual one, so that's good. Um, but my average call duration is, you know, quite low as well. Okay, let me just put that back. So you can see your filters can automatically give you that granular look um, um, at what's going on in your business. So the other out of the box dashboards that we have are our inbound dashboard. Again, let's look at uh, this quarter, just so that we're consistent. And you'll get a little bit more information um, in this particular one. So we're looking at our unanswered calls. So we can see our missed call rate, what's happening with our missed call rate, but why are we missing those calls? Well, you can see the biggest reason is that we've got nobody available. So immediately we know that's a resourcing issue. The next one is that nobody's picking up. That's a behavioral issue. So if people are online available to take calls, but they're not picking up, why aren't they picking up? That's something that we can take back to the business and say, we've got an issue here because our teams are not picking up calls. Things like IVR abandon, outside business hours, or calls that are abandoning before a user's had time to pick them up. Those are things that are a lot of the time out of your control, but certainly the top two are something that you can do something about. And then you can look at things like your call groups by volume, missed rates, longest waiting times, your call reasons. And then we've got some heat maps around your busiest times just to give you a pictorial view. And then individual user stats down the bottom here as well. So I can see for my users exactly um, what their performance is, how many calls they're missing, answer rates, et cetera, et cetera. Outbound is very similar. So we will skip very quickly over this one, but there's just some slightly different metrics on this one um, or just slightly different presentation. So your volume by call of day is slightly larger and other heat maps and information here. So you can see most of our unanswered calls are actually on outbound rather than inbound. So those are the out of the box metric stats. What we've also done is given you a cost management tool. And this is really interesting because um, in my former life, when I'm running, been running contact centers, one of the things I've always found really difficult to do is to predict my variable costs. And usage is a variable cost. So you can't necessarily predict how many calls are gonna come into your contact center, how long your users are gonna be on the phone, how many outbound calls you're gonna make, those sorts of things. And so what we've done is we've actually given you a tool to do that. So let's have a look at this month as an example here. So you can see here, we've got 185 calls, which total 681 minutes. So let's break that down with the um, duration to give us a total cost. So I can see this month, my cost so far is coming up for $15 or $14.5. So I now know how much I'm spending. Is that in budget? Is that what I predicted? If it's under or over, then I know where I can go. Um, but also I can see my cost per minute and my cost per call. So this is really rich data for me as a manager to be able to make sure that I stay within budget, but also um, be able to feed back into the business how much you're, you know, you're, you're um, adding to the business by you know, either a marketing campaign, for example, that's come in. So you can say the cost of that marketing campaign is X, but actually we got all of these sales. So it's been very worthwhile. The other thing that you can do is you can look at your top de destinations. So again, this particular number here is the reason why this um, number is the most expensive number is because we've been using it for an outbound campaign, for example, um, or is it just that it's an inbound number that um, we've had a load of complaints on. Okay, we need to do something about that. You've got a full cost breakdown by, by number. So again, you can see exactly how much each uh, different queue that you have is, is costing you. And it might be a country, for example, you know, we've got different geographical locations here. Um, so it might be that particular country is bumping up your costs. 
And again, you can see your 10 users by core cost. So you can see here, Chiron is, um, um, is, is our most expensive uh, user in terms of his core costs. So is it because he's on calls to other countries that might be more expensive, or is it because he's just making lots of calls? So those are our out-of-the-box reports. But what about custom reports? Well, there are two ways that you can do this. So I'm just going to pop back into the inbound report to start with. And the first way that you can go about this is by clicking on these three dots and doing Save as New. So let's call this Sarah Test, just so that we can find it again nice and easily. So what it's doing is it's creating a dashboard. And if I come into my custom reports now, we'll find one called Sarah's test. So let's go into that one. So it may be that the way in which the um, out of the box dashboards have been set out isn't exactly how you want it. So you can then change the look and feel of that. So if I just come to edit, I can then move things around. I can say, well, actually, I'm not bothered about uh, the average wait time. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to move the missed call rate up here because actually that's important. So automatically, you've now been able to customize this a little bit to your needs. You also have all of the uh, what we call insights, which are your building blocks of your reports, the data that sits behind all your dashboards. You've got all of these here that you can pull in. So any of these I can just drag and drop in and then I can see uh, that new metric in. But what if there's something that's not in your insights and you want to create that? OK, you have an analyze tool. So let me just save that. That would be helpful. Let me save my changes. <laughs> Note to self. Um, and then I'm going to come into Analyze. So what we give you in Analyze is basically this is your, your little um, paint board that you can really start creating your own insights. And as I said, if you think about these as your building blocks of your dashboard, you can create multiple insights that then form a dashboard. So we're just going to call this one Test Webinar just so we can find it again. And it's a very, very simple uh, format. So you've got different types of uh, layouts, if you like, for them. So you can have your usual tables, your charts, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to pull across a date range. And we're going to do this month. And I want to see my calls. And I want to see uh, my call type. So one of the things you can do here, just type it in and it will give you call type. So we'll call that in our rows. So automatically I've now got a little table here, which is my call type and my calls. I'm gonna put that in a donut because I quite like a donut. And I can show the data there. So if I save that, we now have an insight called test webinar. Let's go back to our dashboards. And down here will be the one that we did earlier, our Sarah's test. And you'll notice that it's in the private area. So keep that in mind. And if I come to edit this, You'll see there's our test webinar um, insight that we just created. So let me pull that across. And there's our lovely donut. So if I save that, now we have an updated um, one here. But at the moment, I'm the only person that can see this. So how would I share that with my colleagues? Well, there are a number of ways that you can do that. You can either come to the share button and I can add in Jason. So you could do Jason 
we could do Leon. And then we've now shared that with them. I can also schedule it to be emailed to those people. So for example, you might want to send things to your management team who um, basically will get the report on a Monday morning for last week's performance. So you add a schedule. And then you choose the people again who you want to send it to from your list. Choose how often you want to send it. Click schedule and off it goes. You can also export any of these to PDF to be used in other management reports that you might have. Okay, I know that was a very whistle stop tour. So um, I'm uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot more to see in this, but uh, within this webinar, I hopefully that's given you a real sort of taste and flavor of what the reporting can do. So I will just quickly come back to here, and let's look at the summary of what we've gone through. So with Spoke Analytics, we provide out of the box performance dashboards with comparative data and that drill down functionality, making your life easy. But we also give you KPIs and metrics that allow you to alert your teams if your SLAs are breached. You've got the opportunity to create your own bespoke dashboards with that simple drag and drop editor and then share and schedule those for visibility across all of your organization. And with that, I'd like to hand back over to Chan for any questions. Thank you, Sarah. So we do have a question from Jonas. Um, when Spokephone is used with Cilio Flex, do you add the analytics to Flex Insights so everything can be tracked together? No, they are at the moment uh, separate. Um, obviously, if you transfer calls from Flex to uh, Spoke, you would be able to see that in your Flex um, Insights and also in your Spoke um, uh, analytics for the inbound call into Spoke. But at the moment, they are still two separate entities. Thank you, Sarah. So we can also open up to the floor if anyone else has questions. No, um, but as always, if you do have questions or want to get in touch with either Sarah or Leon, please reach out to me. My contact info will be included in the following communication along with the link to this recording. Um, thank you so much for joining. We hope to see you on our next session. And for those who completed all of the five sessions, congratulations. Um, but thanks again for joining and I hope you guys have a very great day. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.